Hello, Barbarians, and welcome to this very special edition of Alone and Unprepared in Waterdeep. I'm your DM, Rainy. I'm Santiago, your like a boss. <laughs> and I guess we should start just by acknowledging that our recording and releasing schedule has had to change a bit, and we are figuring things out. Got to do some reorganizing, and we have to pivot to a new stance in order to best engage our endeavors and other corporate speak things in these uncertain times. Yeah, basically, um, we are in a situation, as many areas are, where no one can come over to play because everyone has to stay at home. So we are figuring out some online recording options for our group games. Um, and the bigger group has figured out what they want to play kind of in this weird interim. But for now, Santiago and I are trying to record some duet episodes for you so that we have something to do. We're returning to Waterdeep. One of my favorite, at least, settings, games, what have you, alone and unprepared. Yeah. So, um... As the name implies, we are very unprepared for this. Uh, it's been a long time since we've delved into Waterdeep, so I thought we should start with what we remember happening previously on Alone and Unprepared in Waterdeep. So if I remember correctly, uh, I hit it big. I had to complete some quests, I had to whack some people, off some people, whack off some people. I mean, at this point you're just describing D&D &D in general. <laughs> so, like I came to Waterdeep originally on a bounty hunting task, completed that, was hanging out at the Yawning Portal, which I think I moved you over to the map screen, that is right here on the map. Mm -hmm. Um, near the trade ward and that is where you were approached for a new job to find Floon who was missing yeah um, which you did you found a warehouse um, that looked like it was probably run by the Zentrum um, it was mostly cleared out it looked like some fighting had happened and the remaining Kenghu that were there appeared to be um, involved in some way with Xanathar's guild, one of the gangs in Waterdeep. Organized crime sort of operation. Um, they directed you to follow the signs in the sewers to pursue where they had gone. Oh, you also saved Lord Neverember's son, who happened to be in that warehouse as well. Right. And, sorry, continue. So you went down into the sewers, followed the signs, and didn't explore the entire complex, but found the room where Floon was being beaten up, basically, by a magic-using orc. Um, not noticing at the time that there was a mind flayer in the room. Um, who skedaddled and left you to deal with the orc, which you did. You rescued Floon, made your way back to the Yawning Portal, and instead of being paid in gold as you were promised, you were given the deed to a property called Trollskull Manor, and that is up in the North Ward. So that is up here. Bloop. And, um... You've been kind of getting it back into shape. Your companions have been occupying the space when you're not there. Um, you've had a couple of visits from various people, like looking into if you're reopening or not and what you might need. Um, you've been visited by a, a group that was seeing if you needed workers yet, who you turned away at the time. Um, you handled a job for one of the various factions in Waterdeep to basically 
look into the disappearance of elves that was happening in the docks. You handled that, got paid for it. Um, and you also have an invitation because all these various factions are trying to get your attention. So just reminding you kind of what some of those things were that were up in the air. Um, you got some fancy clothes made to attend a theater invitation to take a job. Um, let's see what else you would have been invited to. Oh, you did get an invitation ascending spell um, that was from Vajra Safar, the Blackstaff, who bid you to come to Blackstaff Tower in the Castle Ward at once and bring your friends. You didn't like the tone, so you <laughs> ignored it. Mm. So right now, we're kind of in a little in-between phase where you're getting settled, taking some odd jobs, exploring the area if you want to do that. There are certainly... In the area where the manor is, this is obviously a sort of a business sector that's coming back up, right? So this is an area that's redeveloping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so there are other businesses, like there's some smithy shops and various things on the alley where your manor is as well. And obviously the manor was once a tavern of some kind based right. on the setup. So there, there are things that you can do. So there's stuff that I would definitely want to accomplish. I don't know if we need to role play them or not because they might be boring. Okay. <laughs> because there's just logistical things with my new manner that are really exciting in like a single player type of way, you know, where I'm like, I definitely want to get the tap room up and running and generating revenue. Mm -hmm. That is like tied for number one priority. The other thing that's tied for number one priority is I want to richly appoint the uh, master bedroom and the private bath uh, and, 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 and stuff like that in my manor mm -hmm. and make it look like that's my jam and let it be known that that's where I stay and sleep every night and so on and so forth. But really, I stay in the attic bedroom above that. Okay. And that's where I'm not only more comfortable, but also, um, you know, it, it's a security right. tactic as well. So what are you looking at gold-wise right now? Uh, as far as... What you have access personal, to. Because yeah. I need to know how much of this you could do, or if you need to take more jobs before you can really get this rolling. Right. I have... Three plat, 64 gold. Okay. So, you know from your interactions thus far with the people who have come to visit mm -hmm. that in Waterdeep, everything is very bureaucratic and there is a guild for everything. As you remember, there is a sewer cleaners guild, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are guilds for every sort of upgrade you could do. You had to go through a guild for locks previously. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that your first expense is going to be paying the guild fees to do upgrades in your place. If you're going above board. Yeah. And then there which are I am going. renovations that need to be done to get the tavern up and running, which mm -hmm. I have a gold amount for as well. Okay. But right now... It looks like you'd still need need some more gold to get the guilds involved with the renovations. Got it. Okay. So I can engage the uh, general contractors guild to fix up the tap room as far as repair any walls, any windows, any floors, and hopefully it doesn't get too bureaucratic. Like there's a guild for floors and a guild for walls, and like, you know, I mean, well, hopefully so there'd be it's like one like there for most of your main building types, you'd be dealing with like a carpenter's sort of right. guild. Yeah, yeah, perfect. To fix all that stuff, to like make sure the tables are sturdy, you know, my idea is that. The accoutrements in this uh, tap room would stand up to the nightly brawls that hopefully will take place to make it uh, a destination. So, and there's also not a fireplace, it doesn't look like. So, that 
might be something unless Hang on, let me check. Uh, unless that thing right in the middle above where it's labeled tap room is a fireplace and it should oh, be that's the wrong map Ooh, there we go in the tap room see how it has that thing there that structure right oh, above yeah. tap yeah that's the fireplace okay in the common room awesome so that's uh i'd have to make sure that's working but at least I don't have to install one. Because right. then you're dealing with stone masons and... Yeah, because you have that fireplace, you know. and then you have the cooking fire in the kitchen. Okay, of that. there you go. Yeah. yeah, so I need to make sure those are all working. I need a cook. I need um, ale, wine, and spirits. And there is a brewer's guild that you have to go through for right. that. Well, there's a Brewers Guild, there's a Vinters Guild, there's a Distillers Guild. Well, Brewers guild. and Vinters <laughs> and stuff are all in the same guild. Okay, Brewers, Vinters, and Distillers? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So they're all in one guild. That's cool. What I'd like to do... Yeah, it's called the Vintners, Distillers, and Brewers Guild. Oh. Huh. So, I didn't have them in the right order. I do take slight umbrage that Brewers are last... That's kind of messed up. Save the best whatever. for last. I'll allow it. <laughs> um, I'd like to engage them, right? And see if, like, look, I want to sell your stuff, you know, here in this tap room when I open up. But I can't afford, like, an exorbitant fee, nor can I... Um, let's see. Nor can I, like, pay for a, a, a giant amount of stock. Right. Right? So what I propose is I can just cut you in. You know what I mean? I'll sell your stuff, and you get a, a percentage of the sales, you know? And then mm -hmm. we just negotiate that percentage. That's my plan. I don't know if they'll go for that. I feel like... Lyca would probably have her, like, she'd have her ear to the ground, uh, so to speak, because she's, you know, familiar with the, all this. So she would know if that's a thing or not, but I don't. Right. So I'm just trying to figure that out. So, yeah, at this point, I think those are fine intentions to have. Um... You've definitely been visited at this point already. Let's see. Uh -huh. Like I said, by a group of halflings looking to get jobs, who you turned away because you said you weren't ready to open at that time. And who was... But I got their information. Yeah. Like, I will hire you. I'm just not ready right now. Mm -hmm. So when I open, I'll let you know. Right. You have jobs. Oh, wow. Some of the guilds they list here are bananas. <laughs> I bet you there's a bananas guild. Well, probably. But it's like, repairs to the walls and roof require the approval and oversight of the carpenters, roofers, and plasterers guild. The cellarers and plumbers guild is best equipped to handle refurbishing of the basement and plumbing. Clean bed sheets are provided by the launderers guild. The streets around the establishment are kept up by the dung sweepers guild and the loyal order of street laborers. Meat must come from the Guild of Butchers, ale and wine from the Vintners, Distillers, and Brewers Guild, and bread and pastries from the Bakers Guild. The list goes on. Yeah, um, I'm not going to need any bed sheets because I'm not going to be providing lodging. Right, you're not running it as an inn. No, yeah. it's a tap room. So you can come here, you can listen to music, you can... Uh, flirt and talk and meet in dark shadowy corners you can have some good food you can get drunk and fight and brawl <laughs> and all of that right and at the end of the night you leave or get thrown out <laughs> like one way or another you leave so i will need however security right so i'm gonna need um a cook and kitchen staff i'm gonna need uh, but again, you're not quite there yet. You still servers, have, all that, yeah. Yeah, refurbishing to do. But I have, but we're in the refurbishing phase. Right. You need more money though. Yeah, but yeah. I need more money. 
because I can't afford to pay for the refurbishing, I might be able to engage the Vintners, Distillers, and Brewers Guild um, on a percentage basis. Right. And maybe we'll see if they go for that. But I'm not there yet because I need to have premises right. first. Yes. Which means I need to make some scratch. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I've been approached. I have all these jobs. There was one that was a summons, and that went straight in the fire. Right. Uh, because I'm not summoned like some common thug. <laughs> right. I'm a proud peasant, damn it. So, uh, what are the others, these letters that I have? Um, let's see. I'm, I'm looking through to see who would have contacted you. So you threw that one away. Um, the one that you haven't done yet but have prepped for is um, a message that was sent to you on a paper bird, of which you have oh, one. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and it said, Rainer tells us you're a good bet. He bought you tickets to the opera tonight at Light Singer Theater in Seaward. Well, not tonight. We said it so it was in the future. Um, if you are interested, meet Mert at intermission. Private box C. Formal attire is required for admittance. That's why you were prepping your formal here. Right. And then enclosed, you have um, two tickets so that you can bring someone with you to a play called The Fall of Tiamat, an opera sung in giant, describing the evil dragon queen's defeat at the Well of Dragons. Okay. Oh, do I bring... Um, let me see if you have any other ones. Yeah, I need to look at these and determine which one is going to pay the most. That's really all I'm interested in. Because I'm confident I can get them all done. The, you did get a contact from... Jalester's Silvermane. Okay. Letting you know that he represents someone in the Lord's Alliance. Who was looking to see as you seem to be acquiring wealth in the region. If you wouldn't put some of that wealth towards serving the region. And noted that, no doubt you'd noticed there was a gang war in the area. Okay. Um, causing unrest in the city. And that the Lord's Alliance has offered protection to members of the Dung Sweepers Guild. And if you choose to work with the Lord's Alliance, you would be um, assigned to protect a group of them. Oh, okay. Um, and it would be required, you'd be protection, daily protection for a 10 day for them if you chose to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. There's no mention of compensation. Let's see. It seems that um, most of what they're offering you, besides anything that you might encounter and, you know, plunder yourself, would be a chance to rise within the ranks of the Lord's Alliance. Okay. I need money now. Right. So that's not going to work. Um, and then the one that paid you last time was the, the elf. One. And that was from the Zenturim. You actually worked for the Zenturim to do that. So you um, found out who was killing off elven and half-elven sailors in the dock ward. Right. Um, and you were paid 50 gold for that, I think. Okay. Um, so they paid you last time, but you haven't gotten any word of a new job yet. Okay. So I can go to the opera and meet that person, mm -hmm. or I can start running protection and hope that I lose some stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the opera, because that might pay more. Okay. And here's the thing. Yep. I doubt it's going to pay more, because snooty-ass people are, like, tight-fisted and half the time don't pay you. And they try to pawn you off with, like, some other bullshit, right? This time they gave me a manor, which is amazing, and that actually worked out. But... It's been my experience that rich people are rich because they're hella stingy. Right. So, um, 
I don't have high hopes for this necessarily paying more, but I don't know what the amount is. So I got to find out so I can compare the two and see what's going on. Uh, also, when does this, uh, does the protection job start if I take it? Like, can I investigate this opera one and if it doesn't work out, fall back on the, uh, yeah. And you can always try one? to negotiate for pay as well. Yeah. You know, that's always up to you. Oh, that's absolutely going to happen. <laughs> right. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll see. Okay. But yeah, you can do that. You were told that if you take an assignment, you'd be assigned to like one of the 10 day protection stints. It sounds like it's on a rotating schedule because they've offered that protection to the guild. Mm. So you'd be accepting one of the 10 day shifts. Okay. Got it. So that, that should be available. Should this opera thing not work out now? Who, who do I want to take? I think, I think Deke would appreciate the, the art that's going on. Mm. Uh, Scratch would appreciate the acting. Right. Uh, if it's an opera, they're still acting, right? Yeah. Okay. If Shan, I don't think, would appreciate any aspect of going to an opera necessarily, except maybe the singing, but I don't know how much overlap there are with, like, sailing songs and, and opera sung in giant sung in giant right. so i don't know that that would necessarily be her jam right so i'm looking at scratch or deke and i think i'm going to take deke i'm going to ask deke first oh what does deke sound like yeah okay yeah i think i remember sounds like a scared nerdy little kid yeah he has this sort of voice Right. Yeah. Scared, nerdy little kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, little punk, give me your lunch money. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to have to... Um, so, this whole place has fallen into disrepair, right? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty ramshackle for sure like shingles falling off of the roofs definitely like nothing's been maintained like your companions have helped clean up the dust and debris and stuff like that but as far as making like actual repairs i think the only major upgrade y'all have done at this point is locks the locks right um and we secured it right beyond that you, like, basically your companions have been bringing food and mostly just using it as lodging. Mm -hmm. So they're using the kitchen, but not for, like, commercial purposes and stuff like that. Right. And I have a... Oh, and a, they, um, you have a sign advertising your business. Right. It's a magical sign that you had Deke make for you. That's right. So it's like a magical neon sign, basically. What did, uh, I don't even remember what I named this place, because he made me a sign and it was dope. Yeah. But I, I named it and everything, I don't remember what I named it. Yeah, we'd have to go back and listen. I don't know. Okay. Are you checking your notes? I do have some notes. Let's see here. I did not re-listen to the episode. So. Yeah, these are my uh, quests. Right. Oh, cool. That I that I jotted down. Uh, I have a list, an entry called Troll Skull Manor, mm -hmm. and that is it. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to uh, listen to. Yeah, we're gonna have to dig deep. Yeah. If I re-listen to it, I'll use this point for future Rainy to put that info in here. Thanks, past Rainy. Um, it looks like the sign read, for rent or enterprise, inquire at office. And when you read it, it makes a glowing guide that leads the person to the office. It looks like this was decided before Laika really wanted to reopen the tavern. There you go. <laughs> cool. 
just making sure that there's enough rooms for everyone to have a room and it looks like there are so that's cool all right cool yeah i need to ask deke if he would like to accompany me to this giant opera and so on but you know explain that we're not necessarily going there to see the opera we're meeting someone at intermission so but we have tickets so we can check it out but we might only see half of it oh that sounds very interesting uh what is it that is worn in your realm to such events well well deep formal attire is required so you're gonna have to uh gussy up a little bit and i'll uh kind of hook my thumbs under my lapels and show off my shiny new duds to you uh to deke i think you will find that there are few better at preening than birds you know i've noticed that having a few bird companions in my time but i'll tell you what let's go get you uh duded up and then we'll head on over, we'll be ready to head on over to the, uh, the opera. All right. Um, so Deke's going to go through his stuff and put on some finer scarves and accoutrement. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and get ready to go. So you are, you are free to head to the castle ward, to the Light Singer Theater, when you are ready. Yeah, um... Let's go. I'll make sure to secret uh, a few weapons about my person. You did make sure to have your fancy clothes tailored such that you could still wear your armor and carry your weapons. Right. And still yeah. look like, and still look fancy. Um, what are your weapons right now? Uh, dagger, short bow, and short sword. I feel like I'm not going to take my bow and quiver and everything else with me like that. In fact, I don't think I would even have a short sword. It'd probably just be uh, a couple of daggers. Okay. So as you're kind of make, like securing your weaponry, making sure they're well hidden and everything, um, Deke says, uh, do you mind? And holds out like a finger. Oh. Sure, but what does he seem to be gesturing at? Your dagger. Oh, yeah. With with a slight flourish, something I'm very confident in, having done numerous times effortlessly in the past, I will spin it around and hold it out to him. Handle first. And he says, You know, what most think of as magic, I prefer to think of as a science. And he, like, gets some various things out of very nice, like, velvet pouches that he's changed into and, like, sprinkles it on your dagger. And um, there's a slight glow, which goes out, and he hands it back to you. And he All says, right. this should do you much better. Duh. So your dagger is now a magic item. <gasps> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it remains... In an item indefinitely. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Let me see if I can give you an infusion that's helpful. Yeah. So it has a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. And you said you have a crossbow? I do. Okay. So Deke lets you know that for crossbows, he has similar work that he can do to it that um, prevents it from taking time for you to load. Oh, what kind of a, or wait, I don't have a crossbow, I have a short bow. Oh, okay. Sorry. So yeah, but for now, your dagger is effectively a plus one dagger. Okay. Does it have like a specific name of something that he, uh, that he... He made it a magic item through infusion, which is one of his abilities. Okay. All right. That is awesome. Because... My dagger, right, I've drawn a picture of and stuff like that and named it and everything. So it is a long, like extremely long, very sharp, like piercing type of dagger. Mm -hmm. 
named Darning Song and so on because right. of her mother's or grandmother's sewing yeah. song that she would sing, blah, 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 looks like a needle, etc. So that is um, now a named dagger, like proper, because it's magic item. It's magic. So it's no longer just like important to her. So I'm changing the name in the old character sheet. Okay. And it's plus one. True. That is very cool. All right. Cool. I have some nifty tricks I can do with rope and all sorts of other things too. I've studied these things for quite a while. Okay. I don't know what to say, Deke. This is amazing. Getting a little choked up. Wiping a tear from the corner of one huge glowing yellow eye. It's the least I can do. You've been letting me stay with you as I learn more about this realm and how how it is that I can do something better in this world than, than has been done in the past. Well, no need to stand on ceremony. And all a secret darning song about my person. And also mention, as we amble away, companionably, companionably. Uh-huh. That's a word. <laughs> is it? Hey, no, no. <laughs> Somebody looked that up. Uh, that if you come upon any enchantments uh, similar to this for short swords, man, I would certainly be interested. I'll keep studying. I'll let you know what I can find. Let me know if you need any books. That'd be an investment in the future. <laughs> this is kind of the conversation I think yeah. we have as we walk as you're, to the... Yeah, making yeah. your way to the theater. To uh, the Light Singer Theater. The Theater. So it's approaching it. It's obvious this is a very high-end establishment, which you're expecting since it's in the castle ward. This is a very hoity-toity area of... Water deep. Do you want the map? Yes. Okay. Ooh. The uh, map. Yeah, what I can I'm just gonna see if I can highlight where it is. Bloop. Huh. Yeah, I don't have a specific location for it. But you can see where the castle word is, right? Are those labeled for you? Mm, I think I'm zoomed in a little bit too much. Ooh. So yeah, if you keep heading south below that market area, which is that little oval right there, that's okay. Castle Ward, right oh, south of the market. Okay. So this is the district, basically, that the theater is in. Um, so noting, coming from northward, not super far in the grand scheme of things. Although I would say, would you? Yeah, it's still, you know, a decent distance if you're on foot, but that be the times that you're in. Mm -hmm. So you arrive at the theater. <laughs> the theater. You, your tickets are for great seats. Again, remember that it said if you are interested to meet Mert at intermission in private box C. Right. So. You get a few looks going into the theater because you're a goblin. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you hand over the tickets to the person at the box office, because they do say like the section and like they know what was paid for them and things like that, they're like, oh, oh well, madame, let us, and they like have someone like bring you to the area and offer you a drink while you wait for the show to start. That's right. CD, you go into business for yourself and become a pillar of the community. Respectable. Again, with the thumbs under the lapels. Puffed out chest a little bit. <laughs> All right. And um, so you watch the play. Do you speak, Giant? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Deke does. I speak. He speaks many languages. Common no. goblin and thieves can't. So yeah. it's kind of like if we if like, if we went to an opera. the actual opera, yeah. we're always in like Italian French or Italian yeah. or something. Yeah. Italian, Italian. Yeah. 
So we'd be like, cool, sounds great. Yeah. I don't know what they're saying, but it's kind of like... There's a lot of like facial like, emotion and stuff like that, though. Like, you yeah. can tell what's happening. Or like, when I listen to, like, um, some songs in hip-hop, or, like, especially if it's in French, I'm like, I don't know what the hell that guy's saying, but I get the emotion. Right. <laughs> I know yeah. what that dude's feeling. So watching it, you can definitely tell what's going on. There's also, I mean, at your seating area, um, a playbill, basically, that explains the scenes. So it kind of gives a narrative of what's happening in each act of the play. Oh. Um, and then... The, the first part of the opera is done, and the curtains close, and intermission is called. Okay, dang. It's too bad I don't have opera glasses. <laughs> I don't even have a spyglass or an eyeglass or any of that stuff. Mm. Nothing. Wow. Okay, opera glasses would, would have come in handy. Um, all right. Cool, intermission is called. Yep. Now, I, that's fine. I'll find the box. I know where I'm looking for. There's signs and shit. How hard can it be? Right. And you know, like, the boxes are upstairs. They're the little balconies and everything. And they are helpfully labeled. And with your level of admittance based on your tickets, there's no one who's dissuading you from going into those areas. Yeah, I'd like a VIP pass. Yeah, basically. Um, and so you make your way to box C. The curtain is opened for you by the attendant. And inside, you see a man, a human, by the looks of him. Uh, let me get you that handout. There you go. Boop. Oh. <laughs> Look at that guy. All right. Man, he looks like a pirate king. <laughs> um, and hearing you enter and you're announced by the attendant at the curtain as well he says oh yes you must be Laika I was hoping you would arrive I'll give him my best I'll make my best leg for the dude and tell him well met my lord yes as I was invited, so I arrived. This is most appreciated. Um, I suppose this is the time to get down to business. And he, like, gestures the attendant away. And he says, see, I represent a group that is maybe not what is expected of one of my stature. Um, many would associate me perhaps with the Lord's Alliance or... Some tosh, but I care more about making sure that the balance of things is right, that power doesn't fall into the wrong hands. You understand that actions may need to be taken outside of lords and law and all of those things, although always for the good. Hmm. All right, cool. There has to be something that I can fidget with that I can display balance. Like, maybe my, um, uh, gosh, uh, a die from a dice, from my dice set, sure. or an implement from my thieves' tools. I mean, whatever. Something like that. I think I'll go with my, uh, fanciest die. Maybe something cool like a eight cider, you know what I mean? Something like that. Has sort of a diamond appearance. Okay. And the idea is to um, roll it around on my hand and cross my knuckles and things of that nature, catching it deftly um, to match up with what Mert is saying about balance. Okay. So that I can say, ah, yes, balance, I agree. In fact, I couldn't agree more. All right. He sees what you're throwing down. And... He nods appreciatively, and he says, The group that I represent is called the Harpers. Have you heard of them? The Harpers? Yes. In fact, I recently had a run-in with them, I think. Didn't I? Underground or something like that? Or was that something else? 
There was someone, okay, there was the guy with all the eyes, and that was different. Yeah. Either way, I'm going to be you're like, probably yes. probably vaguely aware. Well, just, yeah, again, because of, like, because of my ear to the ground feature. Yeah. Like, I think that I would just be. Oh, yeah. You would aware know. of anything underground yeah. organization. So, the Harpers are known for working often in secret to write the balance of things. Um, to like make sure items don't fall into the wrong hands or information. And sometimes that takes the form of stealing said item. Um, and sometimes it takes the form of assassinating said bad person. But a lot of what they deal with, they're kind of like the light side of the Zentrum, where the Zentrum deal in mercenaries and information for money and power. The Harpers deal in similar things, but for the idea of making sure that the realms aren't destroyed by things going dark. Okay. So they typically, you wouldn't know a Harper unless they told you that they were one. But you are aware that they are usually, they have their ear to the ground much like you do, which is probably why you've crossed paths with them before. Yeah, I, I might not know any Harpers personally right. or whatever, but I'm aware of them and what they do. Right. What their deal is. Okay. So, he says, if this is something that could interest you, I would be happy to offer you admission. We've seen what you've done with saving the boy, the young lord, um, with kind of digging into some of the strange things that are happening here, with helping to renovate parts of the city, and we think you have that, that right mindset to do what is right and what is needed, despite what you may be told. Oh, okay. So this isn't like a paying gig, it's an invitation to join their, their thing. Are you saying that? No, I'm thinking okay. that. Okay. He says, so if you're interested, I could certainly give you a, a token of the order that you may communicate that with others you may meet um, and let you know of a mission that I think would suit your skills very well. Ah, splendid. Now we're talking, friend. I'll make the die disappear into its die pouch hold a hand out for this token. Right. Why, yes, that sounds fantastic. He reaches into the folds of his fine garment and pulls out and hands to you a silver pin. It is shaped like a harp within a crescent moon. Oh, I'm joining the harpers. Awesome. Okay. Cool. That's a, pretty awesome. I, I think so. They're my favorite. <laughs> he says... Understand, this may sound strange, what I'm going to ask of you, but it's very important. And I think in your line of work, having to gather information the way that you do, I know you'll be able to do it in a way that will be subtle and effective. Subtle and effective, that's me. So, one of the Dre's working in the city is being pulled by a talking mare named Maxine. One of the what's being pulled? Drays. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Tracking. Okay, good. As I said, it's being pulled by a talking mare named Maxine. Now, the humanoids that work with her do not know that she's a talking mare. Um, she, because of her understanding of the local languages, um, gathers information for us. You see? So what I'd like you to do is locate her. Obviously, she's often on the move, uh, nature of her work. Find out if she's learned the identity of any Zent operatives, and if so, determine their whereabouts. That's all I ask. All right. I think I can handle that for you, Mert. And of course, My Lord. if you need to report in, if you have any questions or if anything comes up, you, I will make sure, with all my guards and staff, are welcome at any time to stop by my personal home. Um, and he gives you a location of a manor in the Sea Ward. Right. And who do I file any expense reports with and things of that nature? <laughs> uh, 
I see. If it's something reasonable, I'd be happy to talk through those expenses with you to make sure they are compensated. Excellent. I shall procure this information for you post haste. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you don't know how many times you make an S sound while speaking until you try to kind of <laughs> lisp yeah. them on purpose. <laughs> yeah, wow. Eye opening, really. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have a new mission should you choose to accept it to locate Maxine. See if she's acquired any uh, new information about the Zent. Zent yeah. operative identities, yes. And if so, give that information. Either way, report that information back to Mert. Exactly. And also incur some expenses while I'm at it. Sure. But not actually incur expenses. Right. Basically figure out a way to get paid for this. Sure. That's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah. Gotta make some moves. All right. Sounds good. Now, do you have any questions for me? I know the opera is about to start back up with the next part. Yeah, what is, um, sorry. Only one. What is, uh, Maxine's usual route? Ah, yes, that is an important factor, and he gives you some information. Let me see if I can figure out where she is. He gives you the normal sort of whereabouts of Maxine and her handlers. Okay. Sounds good. All right. And with that, so I will, while I'm thinking, uh, Mert, I'm going to pin this Harper's pin on the inside of my lapel, mm. only going through the one layer of the cloth there. So it's well hidden. So it's well hidden, but still there, so I can kind of flash it if I need to. Mm. Yeah. But keep it secret. Yeah. Otherwise. Absolutely. So while I'm doing that, I'll thank him. Thank you for this invitation, Lord Mert. I'll not let you down. I think that this could be a lucrative arrangement, hinting that uh, the minutes of money, but right. not really, because he's all about, oh, you're in this for the, like, the cause, and I'm like, eh, not yeah. really, and I think that that maybe is a tactic <laughs> to be cheap. Again, nobles, are just, <laughs> nobles and rich people are cheap, that's why they're rich, <laughs> so I think that's his... Uh, manipulative ploy and this is my signal that I kind of see through it but speak the same language. All right. He invites you to stay and watch the opera from his box or to return to your seat. It's up to you. Uh, or, you know, you don't have to stay as well. It's yeah, up to you. I think I'm going to bounce. Okay. You know, and, and let him know. Once you have a task, it's better to see to it than to let it fester. And with that, Flourish, and away I go. Gotta collect beak. And yeah. Have to take off. Yeah. So, um, you know, he happily leaves with you. Um, are you going? Are you going searching now, or are you going back to the manor? Going back to the manor. Okay. Because you don't go searching around in your fine clothes. Right. Plus, you need to get your gear. True. All right, so you arrive back at the manor. Um, you see Shan and Scratch are kind of like running around the baseboards, like looking down and like every once in a while they seem to be like messing with something All down right. in the common room. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on here? And uh, Scratch looks up at you, like cocks, cocks their head and is like, makes a little, like, squeaky noise. And Shan's like, it looks like we have rats or mice or something. Oh. So we're just trying to clean up, plug up the holes. I, these weren't here yesterday. Hmm. 
sudden onset of rats, huh? And I'm very thoughtful about this turn of events. Might be something more complex than the Ratters Guild might handle, thinking of rental cats and things of right. that nature, <laughs> traps and so forth. Right. This could be more of a more this could be more sinister in nature. Hmm. Alright. I'm gonna have to look into this. But in the meantime, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just keep an eye on them. Alright, we'll uh, be vigilant uh, in and around the tavern if you think there might be something going on. Yeah, this seems con- this seems more of a concerted effort. This sort of thing doesn't just come out of nowhere. Unless there's a perfectly mundane explanation for things like uh, an open bag of grain or something, but I really don't think we have anything stored here. So it's weird that these scavengers would show up out of nowhere. Especially in this number, that we're finding rat holes all over the place. Mm-hmm. Affliction of some kind. And we're not near the docks. Like I said, we'll keep an eye out, but if you hear anything or want us to do anything, let me know. Okay. Putting on that, putting that on my to-do list. But I'll definitely tip Shan off to say, like, you know, there could be something magical at play here. So if you want to investigate it from that angle, it might bear sweeter fruit. Uh, not a bad plan. She is a sorceress right. in summer now. That's what I was thinking. All right. Um, I assume maybe you're resting or something like that. If you have not done so already, or um, what are you up to? You know, I'm going to grab a, a quick light bite and change into my street clothes. Okay. And put on all my adventuring gear and head out to uh, seek out the fabled Maxine and see what she knows. I see. All right. Um, are you bringing anyone with you? Yes. Who would you like to bring? Since, um... Gosh, I think I'd like to task Deke. Um, Deke, normally I'd want you by my side for this uh, little sojourn to talk to the talking mayor Maxine. But I think Shan needs your help around here figuring out this rat problem. Do you think you could assist her and I'll take Scratch with me instead? Oh, of course. No problem. Splendid. Where's Scratch? Maybe he wants to go with. Hopefully, because he's going. <laughs> well, Scratch is out. I remember Scratch made the ratty noises at you mm-hmm. when you came in. Oh. Um, when you asked what was going on. So, uh, yeah. So Scratch hops over, and uh, you can you can head out towards the location described. Yeah, I'll fill him in on what we're doing and why. Mm-hmm. Show him my shiny uh, Harper's pin. Then I've transferred to my new clothes in a yeah, similar style. It's a lot of, of sideways bird looking. Alright, because it's shiny. Mm. Make sure it catches the uh, sconce light. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I've now attached it to my adventuring gear in a similar way where I can flash it, but it's otherwise well hidden. And, and well, and, yeah. Sure. Head out. Alright. You're able to easily make your way through the streets to the kind of region that Maxine is known to work in, um, hauling both people and goods, depending on the day. But because it wouldn't be ideal just to start talking to every mare along the way, I'd like you to go ahead and make an investigation check to see if you can locate her. Excellent. (laughs) Look, a roll. (laughs) Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you want Scratch to look around, if you've given him the description as well. No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, need, um, I was going to say I need Scratch to uh, do his thing as well. Uh, yeah, that's a four from me, so. Yeah. So you're just, you start walking up to some, like, random gray mare, <laughs> and you're like, her, my lady, or whatever, you know. <laughs> and um, Scratch sort of, like, taps you on the shoulder. 
shakes a beak and like like kind of points gestures me, points me in the right direction towards a lovely dappled gray mare um, on the other side of the street. Fantastic. That's good because uh, <laughs> I was uh, barking up the wrong horse. Okay. Okay. And walk over to the uh, indicated mare. Mm hmm. And uh, talk to the drayman mm. and uh, about just business and the weather and whatever else and, and so on. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Or insight if you have a preference. All right. Um, no, they're the same. Okay. I'll go with uh, 11 on that. Okay. It's not a difficult one. You note that they are moving kegs of ale right now, which gives you an easy in to talk to them about business and mm, such. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. That's a fine night for moving ale, uh, wouldn't you say there, Goodman Drayman? Drayman uh, so-and-so. It would be finer if we were moving the ale mouthward, you know what I mean? I do. In fact, I'm presently renovating a tap room over in Troll School Board. We're going to reopen soon. Come and see us. Oh, that do sound right up our alley. Ha ha ha, Troll School Alley. Ha ha ha. In fact, you, m <laughs> you might be delivering our ale soon. Who knows? We'll see. If you do end up delivering our ale, I'll make sure to cut you a fine discount. Oh, that's a mighty fine offer of you. I hate to interrupt. We do have to carry these things upstairs, this owner here is very specific. They don't like to come down and do their own work to make us go all the way up the stairs inside. Of course, of course. Uh, don't let me show you, sir, uh, friend. Um, <laughs> this is a fine looking animal you have here. I don't suppose I could give her a peppermint while you unload. Ah, she works hard, this Maxine, she does. Uh, feel free, she's friendly, friendly gal. Excellent. And I'll uh, make my way to uh, nose word of the <laughs> horse and uh, keeping out of the corner of my eye waiting for the drayman to uh, you know to go about their unloading and so on right so that I can speak with Maxine discreetly mm -hmm. as they told you they have to like take the kegs all the way inside up the stairs so they're out of view shortly grunting and complaining as they have to like maneuver these heavy, ale-filled casks right. up the narrow stairway. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a fine-looking piece of horse flesh. And uh, I'm going to make appraising gestures but not touch her uh -huh. at all. Just going through the motions of appraising this, this horse for any casual observer. Right. And speak out of the corner of my mouth for Maxine. My name is Laika. I am here with mutual friends of ours. I've been sent to see if you have word about any uh, members of the, what was it, Zent Guild? Yeah, the Zents, the Zenterim. The Zenterim, about any Zenterim, so that I may ferry that information back discreetly. Well, that's a fine song and dance you put on, but you did speak of a peppermint. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I actually have any is the problem. So, um, do I have anything? So I have rations. Uh-huh. Um, and I wonder if there's anything in there that a horse would like. Carrot, uh, frickin' a sugar lump, a strawberry, anything. Yeah. Um, what kind of role do you want to make since there's no luck in this? Like, do you want to do a persuasion or anything like that? Or what do you think might? Uh, yeah. Let's see if uh, persuasion goes uh, goes through. Okay. Yeah. You know, that was uh, a fine song and dance for the Draymond there. <laughs> Under, in the interest of subterfuge and, do, um, how do you say discreetness? Discretion? Uh, discretion, yes. <laughs> and discretion. But I do have maybe something in my rations here. Let me see. All right. 
Cool. That is a 19 on my persuasion. There is a peppermint. What? In your ration oh. kit. Oh! <laughs> Yes, look what happened. Actually, um, how does this work? Just like, I mean, <laughs> and I'll put it on my palm and yeah. pull it out like you do for a, exactly. a horse to like, snuffle I something. do recommend not curling your fingers <laughs> up. I can't always see past my lips. Um, but she like takes a little crunchy nibble of it. She's like, as you can imagine, my nose is closer to the Dung Sweeper Guild's work than most, so I appreciate your mint. Ah, oh, my pleasure. I'll make sure and keep them in stock. Now, as far as your request, how do I know that you aren't lying to me? Well, you see, I can't provide any guarantee, but... And I'll look away as I suddenly <laughs> flash my harbor pin. <laughs> yeah, between the peppermint persuasion check and that, you're, you're good. She's like, oh, very good. I was like... Mert told me to expect someone who could work subtly, uh, with discretion, as you say. <laughs> so, yes, I do have information for you. Um, I was tasked with ferrying a sun elf and his half-orc bodyguard two days ago. Uh, I picked them up at, uh, Gee, some intersection. I don't quite remember which one it is. But the important thing is, I dropped them off at the yawning portal. Ah, the good old, the good old portal. All they right. were talking about hiring spies to root out the Xanathar Guild um, and where their hideouts are in the city. It does not require a roll to realize, as she describes them, that the passengers she's describing match the appearances of Dabble Starsong and Yagra Stonefist, your Zent contacts that gave you work at the Yawning Portal. Okay. Although she doesn't know their names or anything, she just describes them by their general appearance, that they're a sun elf and a half orc, and that they're at the Yawning Portal. Nice. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, um,. My face is just completely blank, devoid of emotion, mm -hmm. but I'm dry washing my hands like none other <laughs> Let's see. as I contemplate the implications here. Yeah, uh, she rolled a, a six on her insight, so she does not notice. She's too busy chewing her peppermint and talking about her set. <laughs> Horses love peppermints. They do. And Skittles. Oh, apparently. Skittles. That's cool. That makes sense. Did not know that. You know who else loves Skittles? U.S. Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Skittles. Right. So Maxine has given you, you the information. You hear the um, the men that work with her making their way back down the stairs, unencumbered this time. Mm. Um, and she kind of goes back into normal mare mode. Fantastic. Well, time for me to make a hasty retreat. So I'm going to uh, walk down the street at a dignified pace, but making all haste because okay. I want to be away from the area before the guys get back. Yeah. I think. And uh, Scratch is hopping along with you and they turn to you and say, that was a fine song and dance and sort of laughs in a little <laughs> cackling way. <laughs> Why, well, thank you, Scratch. I do, uh, I do pride myself on my singing and dancing skills, but I tell you, we've got a great opportunity here. We get to be double agents. Obviously, we're not going to betray our friends, <laughs> but we can report truthfully back to the back to Mert. It's all coming up like a. <laughs> all right, and that's where we'll go ahead and wrap up for today. Man, <laughs> yeah, good call though. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. I know there wasn't a lot of stuff in this one, but it's us getting back into the story, and I think this sets you up pretty well for some events that can happen in the next session. Yeah, some intrigue and and, and so on. Like I said, I like the idea of the uh, double agent thing, being able to be truthful with Mert, but also warn um, 
my friends as well mm. that uh, the Harpers are onto them, but that they have a man on the inside, so to speak, and uh, yeah, can make a lot of moves, which is also good that I'm setting up my bedroom misdirection Mm-mm. because there might be some assassins or similar wanting to come see me in dead of night catch me unawares mm. but I will catch them unawares <laughs> also I need to protect some um, some dudes in the old whatever for a 10 day oh, to yeah. drum up some, some the, money the dung sweeper guild yeah. yeah hopefully find some treasure I can sell or something <laughs> like that yeah. something no there's definitely some options for next session because I have to fire up the the tap room and get it churning out money yeah I need to do turn it into a profitable business oh yeah all right well barbarians thank you so much for listening depending on when you hear this things may or may not be crazy or back to normal or whatever but stay safe and and healthy if you can um this is a it's a funky funky time to live in you know and if you're listening to this on the way to work or while you're delivering something for someone you're a champion thank you so much for hanging in there until next time barbarians spend your rage wisely or don't and do a fine song and dance <laughs> Yeah, he can give you the location of her usual routes. Right. Of her usual... He gives you the location yeah. of where... <laughs> Why are you being such a turd? <laughs> oh, because I have your ball. Okay.